are back here in Washington, D.C., getting ready for our feature fight of the evening, which will have Riddick Bowe going against Pinklin Thomas and Michael Marley as we get set for this fight. First of all, uh, let's take a look at the biography of one Riddick Bowe. Riddick Bowe, 23 years of age. He resides now in Fort Washington, Maryland, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and his boxing idol, the great Muhammad Ali. And earlier, Michael Marley had an opportunity to ask him a couple of questions. Pink Lon Thomas, former world heavyweight champ. A lot of people think he's on the decline after take, losing his title to Mike Tyson, then being pounded by Holyfield. How much do you think Pink Lon Thomas has left, Riddick? I think Pinkman has a lot to offer. He's proven that. Um, again, he's lost to great guys such as Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. Um, these guys were better prepared and they just proved to be the better fighter. But in fighting Pinkman tonight, I think it would be a learning experience for me and a chance for me to show the people that I'm a much better fighter. What's your timetable for a world championship fight for yourself? Well, we have all the same. We're not going to rush anything. But on the other hand, we're not going to waste any time. When the opportunity presents itself, and with my training manager for this I'm ready, then we'll take opportunities uh, such as fighting Mike Tyson or Buster Douglas. You know, it's interesting. Eddie Futch, you spoke to Eddie earlier. Eddie told you uh, he had mentioned earlier when he took over Riddick Bowe's career, he had mentioned the fact that he didn't have much time to waste, and yet this has been a very slow process with Riddick Bowe. Well, they're not in a hurry. They feel that they have a golden future. There's a millions, multi-millions of dollars to be made with Riddick Bowe. And right now, it's an age-old boxing script. The rising young prospect fighting the faded former world champion. We'll see if Pinklon Thomas has anything left. Does Pinklon Thomas have anything left? Let's take a look at this man who is now 32 years of age. Pinklin Thomas with a record of 30 wins against four defeats. He resides in Orlando, Florida. His boxing idol, Joe Lewis, and he gets kind of defensive when asked certain questions about his future by Michael Marley. The age of 32, coming off, you lost the fight to Tyson and the Holyfield. How do you get it all back together to go after another title fight. You told man, me you such a Some of the greatest champions of all time, man. He held title, defending titles after 32. Muhammad won it for the third time at 32. Archimor won it at 48. You know, Larry Holmes retired at 38. I mean, Archimor won it at 48. What is the 32 thing? You know, it don't mean nothing, man. This boy's a young boy. I got more knockouts than he got fights. I'm going to whoop him all over the ring tonight. Well, a little surly. Ben Franklin once said, surly to bed, surly to rise, whatever. But Pinklin Thomas, now I was speaking to a couple of his friends who are here, guys who've worked with him, and you hear this constantly from boxing people. He has never looked better in his life. I remember when he fought for the championship and he won, he's even better now than he was. Can that possibly be, or is it the Pinklin Thomas we have seen of recent note? Well, you know, you had, if you're going off his last performance, it, it would really be difficult to say that because Pinklon Thomas, you see the staring contest in the ring. Riddick Bowe staring Pinklon Thomas down. But Pinklon Thomas, as evidenced by our interview, in a fighting mood, perhaps, and maybe he'll give a good account of himself. Uh, it's kind of interesting as we, we heard the surliness of Pinklon Thomas. And that stare that he gave you when you asked the question, but yet when Riddick Bowe started up with him, it kind of fell apart a little bit. He started smiling. Well, I mean, if, if we're dealing with reality and we're looking at recent results, it looks like a last hurrah for Pinklin Thomas. We'll see if there's one hurrah left. But he did lose his last fight to uh, a runner in Mike the bounty hunter now mike the bounty hunter is essentially a spar mate for mike tyson and other top fighters so unless that was a fluke you'd have to think that pinky thomas doesn't have too much left Riddick let's go up to the ring right now to rich daniels
So the sweet voice of youth not cheering Pinklon Thomas up. Rock Newman, the promoter of these fights, being introduced. A sellout standing room only crowd here in our nation's capital. The manager, Rock Newman, ladies and gentlemen, number two, congressman from the city of Chicago, Illinois. Savage. The First Lady of Radio in Washington, D.C. is here tonight, the popular owner of Magic 102.3, and the talk show hostess of WOLAM, Ms. Kathy Hughes. Now to some fighters we would like to invite into the ring. First, the 1988 gold medalist in the light heavyweight division, Please welcome Andrew Maynard. We have two world champions in attendance. First from the IBF, he is the current welterweight champion of the world, Simon Brown. or whether Sugar Ray Leonard might have any political ambitions once he's finished with boxing. The reception he got here tonight, uh, if he's running for office, I'm certain he'll be elected. It was a better reception, I feel, than Mayor got. It was a well, and then he had mixed, uh, you know, a little mixture as far as the cheers uh, with, with a few boos boo spotted in. Well, Ray Su Ray. Sugar Ray took a bold step. He embraced uh, Mayor Barry. That's what uh, made me think of it. Thank you. 
closer we get to fight time, uh, Pink Lon Thomas looks unhappier and unhappier. Well, the longer this, uh, these introductions, <laughs> the man can become a veritable uh, volcano. Who might have wrote? Interesting as they come to the center of a ring. Pink Lon, he, now Pink Lon didn't want to come to the center of the ring. He's definitely an unhappy camper. Sylvester Stevens, the referee. Uh, fellas, whoever scores the knockdown, I'd like for you to go to the furthest corner. The stand. I want you to watch your punches. Watch your head. Watch your little uh, record, okay? Keep your gloves closed when you punch it at all times. Good luck to both of so, Riddick Bowe against Pinkland Thomas. Let's check out the tail of the tape and the size of these two heavyweights as they get set to square off in a 10-rounder. Nine years, age differential for Thomas. Height, Bow a couple of inches, and the reach. Riddick Bowe's got four on him. We're underway, both with white trucks, but Pinkland Thomas with a black stripe. What kind of shape was he in? Can he still do it at the age of 32? As he told Mike Molly, what's wrong with being 32? Hey, I don't think there's anything wrong with being 32. When you're a fighter, there could be a lot wrong, particularly if you had as rocky and roller coaster a career as Pinkman Thomas. Well, not only did Thomas take those back-to-back -back beatings by Mike Tyson and then Evander Holyfield, but he also had a serious bout with drug addiction. He says he... Uh, Monday will be his 19-month anniversary off the alcohol and drugs. And so apparently he's been successful so far in uh, getting rid of those addictions. But uh, that couldn't have helped his physical condition. And I think Pink Long lo looks a little puffy. In fact, looks older than 32. It just doesn't appear to be right. What a at the age of 23. Well, there's the big right hand. You know, Bo's going to look to take him out with that chopping right, Spencer. That's the trademark. Riddick Bow, he'll hurt you with a left hook and then bang you out with a right hand. Pinklon Thomas has to establish himself here in the opening round. There he got out jabbed by Bo. Jab in there nicely as Riddick Poe. His last win, a three-round knockout of Mark Tucker. Good left, good left hook thrown by Thomas. He just hit the top of Poe's head, but that was a good shot. Happy goodness, Cooper has been a knockout except for two fights. His third fight against Gary Lane, a four-round decision. Three fights ago, Eddie Gonzalez, an eight-rounder. Also a decision. And I gotta tell you, Riddick Bow looked horrible in that fight against Gonzalez. Just a lackluster, albeit winning effort. Knocked out Manny Contreras in the first and Art Tucker in the third. Thomas with the black stripes. He's wobbled. Pink Lot Thomas is wobbling. Thomas getting puppy under his right eye. That left jab sticking in there by Riddick Bow. Second round, schedule 10 rounder. First round, you go with uh, Riddick Bow. No doubt about it. Pink Lot Thomas really landed his one punch. Uh, left hook to the top of Bow's head. A little showboating by Riddick Bow. No need for that. When you watch Thomas throw that jab, he has no sting on it. He's just kind of pushing it out. Push, push, push. Instead of zap, zap, zap. Well, what Bow should do is uh, concentrate his attack on the body. You can see the rolls around Pinklon Thomas's midsection. He's not in the greatest of shape. Already puffing. What Pinky Thomas is doing now is just cashing in on his former good name. Thomas 
won the championship with a 12 round decision over Tim Weatherspoon in Las Vegas back in 1984. Defended it once with a victory over Michael Weaver and then was beaten losing a 12 round decision to Trevor Durbin in March 1986. There's the body oh, attack by Bob. He's got him hurt. Thomas is in trouble. You Some saw good combination. You saw the knees wobble. That's a sign of an old Finnish fighter. Nice uppercut by Bo on the inside, right up the gut. It's really just a, go right up the just a matter of time, Spencer, because Thomas is offering no offense of his own. Good left hook by Bo. Just blindly coming in, and there's some blood. There's a on cut. The eye, right eye of Pinkman Thomas. There's a cut. I think it's on the lid of the eye, Spencer, and it's coming right down into the eye. Good left hook by Bo. Sylvester Stevens, he's warily eyeing Pink Lon Thomas's cut eye. When Thomas throws punches, he's missing. He's not even close with his shots. <laughs> well, so far, Pinklon Thomas has really shown nothing. been all Riddick Bow as we get ready for the third round. How much further do you think Thomas, uh, think when Thomas can go? Well, I thought he'd get taken out in that round again. He's shown nothing and you know, while I'm being highly critical of uh, Pinklon Thomas, I don't mean to denigrate Riddick Bow. He did not put uh, Pinklon yeah, Thomas into this fight. It's time, past down. time really, to step up the opposition for Riddick Bow. He's too good for his own good. As we were talking before, it, 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 you think maybe a little too slow to bring him I think the timetable uh, has to be sped up. Uh, Riddick Bowe at the age of 23 uh, still learning, yes, but he needs better opposition so people can see just how good he is. It's really not fair to him to keep fighting the uh, Pink Lon Thomas type opponents. It's strange how uh, the heavyweight, the heavyweight division, which kind of like women's tennis was dominated by one or two people for so long a period of time, has suddenly become crowded and Riddick Bowe has joined the crowd. Well, that double left hook really hurt Thomas. He's out on his feet. Riddick Bowe going to town. The bravado is gone from Pinklon Thomas. They say Bowe knows boxing. I hope Pinklon knows it's time to pack it in. Time to quit boxing. Oh no. This bone knows too. Good left tough. Oh, there's a bolo shot. He that doesn't look like he's going to make it to his Well, how he's standing up right now, I don't know. Another left hook. Short left hook to the jaw. And Sylvester Stevens, the ref, Spencer, has to be thinking about stopping it unless Thomas answers back. Say this for Pink Lon Thomas, still has the heart of a champion. A lot of guys would have, uh, you know, laid down, would have gone right to the canvas after taking some of the shots he took. But he's in there, to, now he's trying to come back. Bo just biding his time. Bo's looking to take him out with that uppercut on the inside. Now, this is not the old Pink Lon Thomas. I think when Thomas is going to have to sit down, watch the tape of this, and make make a decision about his life. Well, so, suddenly he's hurt. He's he's fatigued. He's staggering really about the ring, and it's it's sad to see it. But an age-old boxing script being played out. Requiem for a heavyweight. Exactly. 
looks like that left eye is puffed up too. Hello, Thomas comes back with a left hook. Really, if you count the punches, Thomas has landed though on one hand. But he's gonna get through this round, it looks like. The fourth round for Riddick Ford has yeah. been all Riddick Bowl as we move to his corner. How that? He just dominated these first three rounds, and it's I'm amazed at the fact that Peyton Thomas is still on his feet. And they can see they work on the cup. Yeah, they're, they're, right they're, they're trying to close up that eye, but I don't think it's going to make Feed a him difference. Down. Stay the left. I get that last round, 10-8 uh, to Riddick Bowe. He had Thomas hurt twice, three times. Riddick Bowe, what a physical presence. Six feet five, 230 pounds. Tight end material. All pro linebacker material. 6'3, 227 for Pinkman Thomas. Well, I'm trying to figure out Riddick Bowe right now. I don't, you know, he should go right on the offensive and take this man out of there. You can see the swelling around the left eye, the left jaw. There's the swelling around the, the left side of the face of Pinklon Thomas, that's testimony to the physical beating that Riddick Bowe has been dishing out. Well, this is the fourth round. You're just measuring right there. Fourth round of a scheduled 10 rounder. Nice one two by Bowe. <laughs> There's nothing left in the Riddick and the Pinklon Thomas punching. Marshall. I think Riddick Bowe may have had tougher work in sparring with Art Tucker. Surprised at, at the kind of round we're seeing from Riddick Bowe. It has been, it's been a non round yep. up until this point. I I'm think get the feeling he might be carrying it a little, just getting, just getting some minutes in the ring. I don't think Riddick Bowe would want to do that, and I don't think, I think he'd get a scolding from uh, the mm -hmm. Dean of Trade. But I think he's just frustrated. You know, he had the man hurt about five times now in the bout, and he's still banging away at like a statue. And that's about as mobile as uh, Pink Lon Thomas has been. It's like a statue that doesn't want to go down. So Riddick Bowe just keeps chip, chip, chipping away. Now, what's the problem there? Oh, tape loose, uh, apparently, on the glove, right glove of Pink Lon Thomas. And at least that gets Pink Lon Thomas a breather. Something he can use. And Riddick Bowe catching a huff and puff in his corner. That's what it is. The trainer is fixing the uh, tape. And Riddick Bowe just waiting for uh, his cosmetic repair. Used to be a well-known trick in boxing when your man needed a breather. You Put a cigarette hole in his glove between rounds. <laughs> Another trick is to unloosen the tape. Teach him how to spit out that mouthpiece of food. <laughs> well, uh, we had a tail of the tape earlier. This is a uh, tail of the tape version two. Well, Pink Lot Thomas seems to be upset. I don't know. He's mad at his corner. He's not He's happy. To be like he's been in his corner. You put the tape on me. Let me get back in the right, Exactly. But uh, my point is, it just doesn't do Pinklon any good to get mad at the corner. No. Get mad at Riddick Bowe. That's another story. Now, now the referee is not happy. Sylvester uh, Stevens, the referee, wants the other glove fixed. Apparently, 
I saw both the left and right gloves. If these guys were a pit crew in Indianapolis, <laughs> they wouldn't get the car back on the track. Meanwhile, back in the center of the ring. that this young man and hopefully we'll be able to have that interview if we can't though let me just uh, preview it a bit uh, Michael uh, he thinks at this stage 12-3 Riddick Ball is a better fighter than Larry Holmes he definitely compared him favorably with the young Larry Holmes you know we talk about the fighting heart of the boxers I should point out 79 years young Eddie Fudge in the corner tonight despite the fact that he can barely walk he's having hip replacement surgery gonna have an artificial hip uh, uh, surgically uh, implanted uh, next week but yet he's here with his man Riddick Bowe this could be the last hurrah right here for Pinkman Thomas as he's back he had a pretty restful fourth round and he comes out here trying to throw some punches Despite his uh, ailing hip, Eddie Futch is moving more nimbly than Pinklon Thomas. <laughs> well, Riddick Bowe's job, quite simply, is to take this man out of here now. Scheduled for 10. Question is, how long might this one last? We'll find out. Well, Pinkman Thomas has made it into the sixth round. Spencer Ross along with Michael Marley were ringside in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., a packed house on hand. It has been all. Riddick Ball in the corner of Pinklin Thomas. A great deal of concern and some work on that right arm. Well, Willie Farmer, the trainer now for Pinklin Thomas, was screaming at him. I don't think that's going to have much effect. This is your territory. I've got a 50-46 all Riddick Bow to this point. We go to the sixth round. It's tough to envision the script changing here. Times when fights do turn, but you see certain things that can indicate and let you think that the possibility exists. The fatigue on the fighter uh, who is ahead because of the effort he's expended, but right here, there's just doesn't seem to be any chance. Well, Riddick Bowe really hasn't been hit a real solid shot. There he lands a nice right hand. And Thomas is in trouble. 
Good uppercut that time by Riddick Bowe. You want to see the flurry from Riddick Bowe. The, the, the stuff of which champions are made of. And you see the potential there. And occasionally we've seen those kind of flurries, but you'd like to see more of them. There he's triple jabbing uh, for Pinklon Thomas. Pinklon Thomas just a game loser at this stage of his career. Took this fight for very little money, Pinklon Thomas, and looks like the end of the trail. kinds of fights Spencer where where the loser uh, but the best offer he'll get maybe is to uh, wind up as a sparring partner for a Riddick Bowe the top young heavyweight that's sad but that's the reality of boxing pink long Thomas at the age of 32 who knows how badly his body was ravaged by the various bouts he's had with drugs as a young man he had a long period of heroin addiction he beat that the last few years, he battled uh, crack cocaine problems, alcohol problems, and so he may not have the typical body of a 32-year-old former heavyweight champ. May have paid the price for all those years of drug abuse. Well, right here, after that early flurry in the sixth round, there's the big right hand by Reddick Bowe. Thomas may yet weather another round. And the sixth round is history. Riddick Ball unable to put Pinkley Thomas away once again. Seventh round. Interesting to think of Thomas uh, as a crossover he has looked on occasions in this fight. He should be able to take Pistol Thomas down, and he hasn't been able to do it yet. He hasn't been able to put it on the yet. You know, uh, one of the saddest vignettes I remember in the uh, recent boxing history, Pinklon Thomas, when he held the title, they were going to see Riddick Bowe pounding on him. That was with that uh, right uppercut. But when he briefly held the heavyweight title, Pinklon Thomas didn't focus on boxing. In fact, before one of his fights in Vegas, title fights, he was in the lobby of the Hilton Hotel trying to sell these records that he had, he had uh, come out with. He wanted to be a singer. Well, I think Pink Long Thomas may have sung his last professional boxing song. Well, you asked him before, what about a singing career? What did he say? Well, he kind of snarled at me on that one, too. I, I didn't mean it uh, in a smart alecky kind of way. He, he had a good voice, but uh, just didn't have the right focus. When you're heavyweight champion of the world, you should be looking to pedal record albums on the hallway of the or the hotel lobby the day of a fight. Well, certainly, certainly. Bedtime. <laughs> Priority mix up. He'll be singing the blues after this one. <laughs> well, you know that Riddick Bo wants KO next to Pinklon Thomas's name on his record. You know that Riddick Bo won't be happy, not to mention. Uh, Eddie Fudge and uh, manager Rock Newman, they'll be very unhappy as well should Pinklon Thomas somehow last the 10 round limit here. In the seventh round right now, and again, only twice in his 18 fight career as an opponent gone the route with Riddick Bowe. That was in his third professional fight I mentioned earlier against Gary Lane, a four round decision, an eight round decision three fights ago in April of this year in Las Vegas against Eddie Gonzalez. Everyone else, KO, KO, KO. Well, it's hard to criticize the record of an 18-0 Riddick Bow, but if I could voice one minor criticism, and it's that Riddick seems to lose his concentration sometimes. 
Right here, Pickman Thomas is in a lot of trouble. Riddick Bowe looks like he's going to put him away here in the seventh round. He is defenseless at this point, is Pinklin Thomas. Well, nobody could really ask for their money back. Pinklin Thomas, his skills totally eroded. I don't know how he stays up, Spencer. He's rocking back and forth. He's off balance. And, Rid and Riddick Bowe can punch. Bowe has definite power. These are not love taps. He's ready to go now. He is certainly out on his feet. The uppercut, the overhead right, another uppercut. And Pinklin Thomas is still standing. I don't know why referee, the referee's not stopping this fight. Look at this. The man cannot stand. This should be stopped. This is pathetic. There's just no point. There's no way he can win this fight. He can only get very seriously hurt. There's the referee. That's what they call him, Sylvester Stevens. And just why he is continuing to lie. Now the doctor is coming to the corner to take a look. Well, it's about Pittsburgh. time, Spencer. We, we've talked about that. Is there a doctor in the house? He's here now. And I want to see if they can allow this fight to continue. Piglet Thomas didn't know where he was. Totally out on his feet, and that's how a fighter might be. Listen, I'll be without a neurologist. Don't try to go to the fight and put serious to me and Marvin. There you see the pounding. I mean, it's just one shot after another. It's hammer time. And MC Hammer is Riddick Bowe. The hammery Pink Lawn Thomas. Now look at this. The man can't even stand right here. Even when he's not being hit, he's rocking backwards. Yet here we go. More of the same. And you wonder, you know, we're criticizing the referee. What about his corner? Well, throw it in. Referee, the doctor, I think uh, there's enough criticism to pass oh. around. I don't know. This is a poorly officiated fight. Hey, would anybody criticize if we went to a commercial right now? <laughs> it would be the humane thing to do. I don't know what's wrong with Thomas's corner. Why they don't throw the towel in? I mean, this is pathetic. And these people supposedly care about Pink Lawn Thomas? Trainer Willie Barber not making a move, just watching the slaughter. The left uppercut by Riddick Bowe as he continues to confuse Pink Lawn Thomas with a punching bag. Because that's what the former champion has become tonight. I guess we're both uh, editorializing, Spencer, but this deserves it. Well, there's, you know, a former great tennis champion once said to me, Fred Perry. I said, come on out in the court. He said, no, I don't come out in the court. I want people to remember me the way I was, not the way I am today. Fred Perry, of course, three-time Wimbledon champion. You'd like to allow this man at least the sense of dignity to be remembered a bit as to what he once was instead of what he's become tonight. He's become a punching bag. for professional boxing. I really, I think we've said enough. Let's just, uh, like, folks, you can watch it at home, and we'll watch it also. I think we've made our point very strongly. This fight should be stopped. This is ammunition for the AMA and other people who want to abolish boxing.
of it. Barber said the right thing. He said, yes, that's enough. It was a no-doubter from about the third round on, and hopefully Pinklin Thomas will come out of this just a rather bruised man and can look toward the future for something else. How he was able to survive that barrage for eight rounds is beyond me. Why he was allowed to survive it why the referee, why his own corner allowed the barrage to continue. Eight round, referee stops the fight, a technical knockout, and 19 and 0 now goes one Riddick Bow. Bow knows. We'll get back with the final decision, and Mike Marley will talk with undefeated Riddick Bow when we return. It's Friday night at Back here in our nation's capital, let's get the official decision. the corner of Pinkland Thomas retired their fighter the winner now by TKO with a record of 19 and 0 Riddick Bow Ladies and gentlemen there will be two more fights this evening please do not leave two more fights yet on the card this evening So Riddick Bow makes it a perfect 19 and 0 Bow knows indeed and as elections begin to start in this country, they're carrying campaign placards around the ring. Bo knows boxing. He certainly does. Bo, four champion. Washington's next world champion, Riddick Bo. Mike Barley is up in the ring trying to get Riddick Bo's attention. Okay, Riddick. And let's go up and check in with Michael. Con Michael? Congratulations. You stopped the former world champion. But let me ask you, I know you're an intelligent, compassionate young man. I'll try to be. We were you sorry that you had to keep pounding away? Didn't you think that could have been stopped a little earlier? I thought so, but again, Pinkley is a great warrior, and he came to fight, and he's a diehard. I'd like to thank Pinkley also for giving me this opportunity. Again, the public was down on me, and fighting guys like Pinkley Thomas showed him that, you know, I'm ready. How do you think he stood up, just, just fighting hard? Because you had him hurt five or six times earlier. Well, that comes from great conditioning. Again, they just go to say that, Pinkley was in shape, but he came ready to fight. Okay, trainer ready, but you got to be happy. But were you surprised that that fight wasn't stopped sooner? I mean, top. Right, right. I, I, I thought it should have been stopped the round before. Just would seem to be taking a beating for no reason. For no reason at all. Okay, quickly, what kind of a grade would you give your heavyweight prospect Riddick Bow tonight? Well, I, I'd give him an A minus, I'd say. Okay, Riddick, you got an A minus. Riddick, an A minus from Papa Smurf. Are you happy with that? Oh, I gotta be satisfied with it. But I'm looking to improve, and maybe the next guy can help me get A. Okay, moving on up. He wants to get an A minus tonight. Riddick Bow looking for an A from his professor, Pugilix's professor, trainer Eddie Fudge. Down to Spencer Ross at ringside. Okay, we got two feature bouts. One of them, uh, both of them, uh, finished before uh, their scheduled end. Eugene Speed, a fifth round TKO over Kenny Bazemore and Riddick Bow, an eighth round TKO.